their journey, they went to, they were in Egypt at first, then they went to the wilderness, and then they finally made it to the land of Canaan, into their promised land, amen. In the time, it says, Joseph and all of his brothers died, ending the entire generation. But their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that because, greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Eventually, a new king came in power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Pithom and Ramesses as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed that made their lives I'm sorry. The more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order in, in the Hebrew midwives. I'm sorry, that was the last one that. So they made their lives ruthless in all their demands. That was just a little background on how they had to be in bondage and pressing. And the first lifestyle was the, like I said, the Egypt lifestyle. And that represents bondage. Bondage. When the children of Israel were in, in bondage, when they were in Egypt, they were in total bondage to the Egyptians. They didn't know if they were going to be alive the next day or not. The Bible says that Pharaoh was afraid of the Israelites because they were becoming so num numerous. He feared that they would organize themselves and threaten his kingdom. So he made them slaves and oppressed them to kill their spirit and to stop their growth. Who does that sound like to you? The enemy? The enemy tries to come in and keep us in bondage and tries to stop our growth, tries to kill our spirit. But in our day, that is exactly like I said, what Satan comes to try and do to the believer. He tries to kill our faith by keeping us in bondage so that we will question the promises of God. Does God really see what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. Does God care enough that I'm hurting? And the answer is absolutely he cares. He cares and he wants to bring you out. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The Egyptians worked the children of Israel for long hours in the mud pits and making bricks, while others also were skilled craftsmen and they worked them just as hard. But regardless of their skills, they were all slaves and they were all watched closely and still beaten brutally. They were overwhelmed with grief and had prolonged distress, continual prosecutions and punishment. But one huge advantage that the children of Israel had is that they believed in God mm -hmm. and they believed in one God yeah. unlike the Egyptians who worshiped several idol gods they believed in the one true and living God yeah. and God is good even while you're in bondage yeah. and because Pharaoh decided to make them his slaves God came and rescued his people in Exodus 3 chapter 7 chapter 3 verse 7 thus it reads then the Lord told